Okay, so we will be talking about the Yamaha MG10 XUF. Now, I want to um, disclose the live audio on OBS does have just a limiter on it, and then I'm using the art voice channel as my um as my microphone uh, channel strip at the moment, and we have nothing on voice meter besides a gate. So no effects, no nothing, just a limiter on OBS. So let's 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 talk about the the MG10 XUF. Ever since buying it, I've learned quite a bit, and I wanted to clarify a few things. Number one is that you can use the onboard effects without having it plugged into um, your computer via USB. That was the one fault that I uh, made a mistake of. So basically, you have here a effects um, channel, individual channel. And when you turn it on, okay, it is on. And it, whatever effect that you choose up here out of 24, it's between numbers 1 to 24. One is this reverb. I, I, I always use that. This knob here is going to determine how wet or dry the signal is. So if you have it just a little bit, then there's just a little bit of reverb. If you put it all the way, it's basically wet. Completely wet. And you can turn it off. So that is how the effects works. It's these white knobs here, which you can turn up or down to determine how wet the signal is, or in a sense, how, 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 how strong that reverb is. Um, because basically this, this, this max, this min max uh, effects knob up here, it really just functions more for like the pitch stuff or the flanger and um, uh, other effects. It, it doesn't really affect the doesn't really affect the reverb too much. So that's the effect stuff. I want to really clarify. I figured that out. Control room. So as you can see, I'm plugged into the mixer. Okay, that was important. I should have done that. <laughs> um, this button here. Okay, Th this this knob is going to be for your headphones and also for your monitors. Now, if I click this button. I won't be able to hear how I sound like at all unless I click the PFL button. Now, I can click the PFL button and hear myself. And if I turn this button off, the on button, I'll still be able to hear myself. You're not going to hear me say the F word. And then if I turn it back on, you'll be able to hear me say the F word. Fuck. Okay. So that's that. So this button allows you to mute yourself. So you, if you don't want to monitor, you don't have to. Um, but if the button is on and the PFL stuff is off, you'll hear what that channel sounds like. So let's say we have the piano channel on, okay, and we're playing the piano or something. So what we can do is we can just monitor one of the channels or we can monitor just the piano and we won't be able to hear the microphone because it's not selected under this PFL button, which I think is pre-fader level or pre-fader listening or whatever. Uh, but it's literally a basic control room. So as long as those two options are selected at the same time, they don't need to be on, but you'll be able to hear the signal. But then if I only have one of them on, I'll only be soloing basically that one channel. So that's kind of cool. It's very useful. Um, I would think more for live, uh, live mixing, but in my use case, I have never had to use the... I've never had to use it because I've been literally, okay? I've literally only been doing like stuff on the DAW. I haven't really been doing anything live. Um, if it's anything live, just a little bit of reverb on the piano and voice. That's really all that I've been using this for. Um, and it's been very helpful to have all the inputs be able to go into my interface. Now, at that point though, if I wanted just a bunch of inputs, I should have just bought like a you know, more inputs of the interface, the more I think about it. But the one thing that's really beautiful about this mixer that I pointed out in the review or in the first impressions is this fucking on and off button. The muting is perfect. It's noise lit. Noise lit. Noise lit. Oh my goodness. Okay. I think I, I made my point. The padding knob works, which is really nice. So even though this is, okay, uh, if, if it, well, in a sense, this is a mono, it's a mono piano, mono, mono microphone, in a sense, um, I'll be able to go to the right side of your ear right now, go to the left side of your ear right now with the panning knob, which is really nice to have that control. Uh, but now, to speak about panning and left and right, you'll see that up here, the meter 
moves in tandem. And it's perfectly fine. And we're using, we're using, oh, sorry. We, we, we're using balanced XLR out uh, into quarter inch right now. These are expensive Mogami cables. But you'll notice that on my interface, and this happened even when I was using not the quarter inch line in, um, but even if I was using uh, the reverse. So it'll be quarter inch out on the mixer, which is right underneath beside the headphone jack. So if I was using quarter inch out, okay, into balanced XLR, I noticed that this still happens. And if you look here, what am I talking about like this? Look at the left bar, okay, for the left channel here. When I scream and yell, you can maybe even see it while I'm talking. Ah, 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 ah. You'll see that the left, it's higher than the right. It's not balanced, like, like level wise. So I don't know what happened. I think my unit is defective. Uh, I don't think I can do anything about that or Yamaha can do anything for me, but that's uh, it's a sad truth and that's what I have to deal with now. So yeah, it, it sucks. It happens on the XLRs. It happens on the quarter inch. I've tried both. Um, and uh, yeah, it, it even existed on, on, the, on the Scarlet. So it, it, it's, it was a big pain to, to find this because this is the one thing I wanted to get away from when I left the Behringer uh, mixer behind. So it's sad that it exists on this. Um, but the, the beauty, okay, is that the right side does not distort or clip. It's only the left. So now I'm thinking, is that really on purpose? Because I don't know. Uh, but if it is, all right, because it's only the left channel. And I've tried swapping it to test. And yeah, it's only the left channel that distorts. Um, that's kind of helpful for me. Because if I have something, a recording where, let's say, I scream at the top of my lungs and I end up distorting even if I have the compressor on, on the voice, uh, on the channel strip. And I can't do anything about it. At least the right side channel does not distort. That can be the only thing I can really imagine it being like useful for, but I digress. There's an issue with that on the output and it kind of sucks. So the effects, the panning, EQ. We have a 10K uh, attenuation. We also have 2.5K attenuation and we also have 100 uh, Hertz attenu attenuation. So 2.5, uh, 10,000, 2.5, uh, and then we have 100. Just have to make sure. And it goes up to 15 dB. Okay, yeah. Okay, I just had to make sure. I was like leaning in and out. So the the, the beauty of this is that my S's occur, uh, occur at 10K. So if I start to want to brighten up a dynamic microphone, tss, 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 that hurts, right? So we can actually just subtract a VQ. Tss, 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 won't be that bad. And then for 2.5, I have bad nasal frequencies. And then for 100, to just remove a little bit of the mud. So for my voice, this is useful. It's actually the same EQ I had on the voice channel. It's the same thing. Um, the uh, the amount uh, that this that this attenuates um, definitely bell curve. Uh, it's a, you know it's a, it's pretty it's pretty sh it's pretty nice and tight, um, and it doesn't sound it's it's not that it's not smooth when you're trying to uh, attenuate those frequencies or, or or remove them or boost them, but they're they definitely work. <laughs> yeah, they work. Um, so I would avoid too much. Um, unless you have some weird microphone that is just dark as heck and kind of muddy and gross to begin with or something. But, um, anyways, the, the one thing that I really do like about it though, is that it does fit and work for my voice and it's supposed to be an all purpose three band EQ, right? But this is going to be such a, such a specific case and not, it's not going to fit all voices, but man, at least a sibilance at 10 K 2.5, that's kind of common, I think. And then 100 hertz is kind of universal. But if you have a very high-ranged um, soprano uh, or a female vocal, there might be a chance that that's not useful to you guys um, so or to those girls. So that's that. Uh, how about the gain? Okay, The gain on this goes up to 60 dB, which means you can power a SM7B, uh, which I think is which is all that, that matters, right? If you can power a 7B, you're set for life. I would think pretty much um, that's the only microphone that matters. I'm just kidding. But at least you don't need to have a fat head or a cloud lifter unless you want to clean up the preamps, which is going to be 
my segue into the preamps. Um, there's an issue. So when I first plugged my channel strip into it, so the DBX286S, I plugged it in and I didn't have to, I didn't have anything off and I left everything at Unity here. Okay, everything was nothing was changed and everything was in Unity um, at zero. I noticed that we were clipping and boosting and it was really gross. And I was turning stuff down on the on the channel strip. That's wrong. So I don't know if this is the correct way to do it, but there's two ways to get a clean signal into this mixer. One, one of the first ways to do it is to use the pad. 26 decibel pad is on all four of these XLR uh, combo jack channels for one to four or uh, yeah, for one to four. So if you want to, you turn that on. The other way, I'm going to turn it off. The other way, okay, is to turn the output dial on your channel strip down by 10 dB, and then you have the pad off, okay? So that was something that I learned on my own. I don't know if that's actually how you're supposed to do it, but... Why else would we not want to use the output gain? Now, the only thing that sucks about this is that this is where you start to get weird readings. I do have a VU meter and a digital meter on the art channel voice. So now I don't even know if the compression is working because it even shows that I'm not getting any compression anymore. My VU meter moves so small compared to when I had it driving completely. So let's let's change that back, huh? Shall we? So now when I speak, okay? Let's let's turn this up a little bit more. Uh, up by 10 dB. There it is. So now it's up by 10 dB on average you should be around eight. I like being a little louder um, because I'm compensating and using, I'm, ma I'm making up gain plus boosting myself to, to, to be louder. So um, maybe don't do that. Do that in software. Um, but for the, for, 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 for the video, I didn't want to use any of the OBS filters, like the gain filter or anything. I just want to use hardware for this. So apologies. But yeah, even though I'm doing this, incorrectly at the moment if you did want to if you need it to be louder um those are the two ways i found out how to plug in your channel strip into this mixer um or into i think into a majority of the mixers out there um because it'll also tell you that it's a plus 10 db uh for the line and so you're going to subtract 10 db on the output gain of of this uh of the channel strip or whatever microphone preamp you're using and you can add like a little bit, depending on how much the compressor is compressing. Now, if you look at the compressor, okay, I'm going to, I'm going to do a thing. <clears throat> As you can see, now my compressor is actually working when I need it to work. Okay. So that's good. It's good. I'm happy. So now with, with that out of the way, okay, with that whole skit out of the way here, what about, what about? EQ compressor, the compressor on this already. Now, this will close the video basically because, um, or well, I'll talk about the compressor and then also the 80 hertz um, cut, 80 hertz uh, low cut filter. Um, but for the compressor, y it does start to pump pretty hard when you go past nine o'clock. So I would suggest nothing more than nine o'clock, which is actually what I have for both of the mic channels. One is for the SM7B. It's just to give it a little bit more, um, a little more gain, um, basically, is what I'm using the compressor for. At the same time, just to increase the level, whatever. Um, noise to signal ratio, a bunch of cool stuff, right? So I'm using a little bit of the compressor on this. Um, and, th and, th and then for, for this channel here, this strip is for the SM58 if I want to use a handheld microphone. So I also find that at around nine o'clock it's pretty good if you start to pump this to 12 and then even more than that it's completely overkill it doesn't help the sound at all um you lose quite a bit of dynamics and you do start to hit a you start to hear a little bit of that hiss which 
is bad. It is bad. So that's that. Now, the the 80 hertz pass filter. Typically, you have that on so you can remove some of the rumble, right? Um, now, let me let me make this clear. I do have an 80 hertz pass filter already on on the art. Uh, voice channel, but I'm gonna turn it on on the on the on the strip here. So I'm um, or on the uh, on the mixer. So uh, games are cool. Games are cool. Games are cool. I'm turning it on. Games are cool. I'm turning it off. Games are cool. Like it's very noticeable. Um, I think ever since listening to the art voice channel, I never noticed how smooth that low cut filter is and, and how smooth it can be um so a video on that soon uh, but um honestly the mg10 xuf besides that the driver it's quick i think it's enough um i think it's enough i, I also have to squeeze this into this video i'm so sorry there, there's so much to cover um the other thing i want to mention too is the 910 channel so if you end up using this as a usb interface right uh and you're plugging into it your headphones you're plugging into the to the mixer here you're gonna want this button here that says um two monitor and then two st you want you want it up and you want the usb button in and then when you turn this on you'll be able to actually listen and also this will play it back it'll actually be looping uh, whatever is on your um on your desktop so that's when this thing gets useful this uh, the PFL buttons, because then you'll be able to listen to the microphone, listen to your desktop audio, and then you can control the desktop audio through this fader here. And it does work with voice meter, by the way, which is kind of cool. So the, the driver itself is awesome, but it isn't the fastest thing out there. I think the Scarlett can get faster than the Yamaha in terms of its delay. So I don't even use this plugged in via USB ever. I've tried it once. Gosh, I love that button. But yeah, I tried it once and it was, right? Uh, so yeah, especially after getting the Motu M4, I've never had latency issues ever. So I don't want to ever have it ever. So let's turn this off. We're getting back into the M4. So now that's the mixer. And I think uh, that's enough for me to say um about it like ever since owning this thing i've been trying to take care of it by putting a cloth over it like a nice thin handkerchief just so that there's not a lot of dust that gets on this and i've been also doing the best that i can to you know just just use it when i need it and and what i mean by that is especially some of the effects especially like the 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 reverb <laughs> It's kind of cool. Um, the EQ, kind of nice. Um, the ability for me to have more inputs going into my interface is nice. But at the same time, you might as well just buy an interface that has multiple ins and outs. But depending on the price, they may come with like a virtual mixer that allows you to mute the individual channels. The Moto M4, I believe, doesn't. So even though there is like line inputs on the Moto M4, I... You know, like I won't be able to control it. Um, so it's kind of nice to have these mute buttons. Awesome to be able to mix and fade it myself. The pan knobs are wonderful. Um, make make a mono signal stereo. Like that's that's great. But kind of wish that if we could, because of my issue of audio getting out, I wish there was a means like in voice meter where I can actually turn the channel that stereo into a mono signal instead. So that way. There's there's a balance for both the left and right channels, but I don't know if any kind of piece of hardware even has that ability to do so with a mono out. Um, if you had a stereo signal, so uh, it's 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 a dream. But honestly, this mixer has has done its job for me, and I love it, and I'll continue to use it in my chain. Um, I will continue to use it in my chain, and it's just really really wonderful, and I'm very happy with the purchase but it's definitely i guess the few little tiny things like the features like the control room um the fact that like these channels here are kind of basically useless and especially the phantom power button i didn't mention that but when you click this button it applies to all four 
of those channels. So you have to be very cautious of what's plugged in here. And since a majority of the standard microphones are dynamics, like 57s and 58s, um, the, the day that you want to use a condenser, you're not going to want your dynamics plugged into this. So you basically only are able to use condensers on this if you end up having a condenser um, and you need the phantom power. So I digress. Um, that's everything for the mixer. A little bit of an update. And I'm very happy I made the video. I learned quite a bit. Yeah, I think. I don't know if I'm doing anything right, but I mean, at the at the moment, this sounds good enough for me. And I'm very happy with it. So take care, be safe. Um, I'll probably make a follow-up video on the Motu in 4 now. Yeah, I think that's probably what's going to happen.